welcome to the Realty Plus show on Republic Television. I am Amit Wadhwani and alongside Anurag Batra, we will tell you more about the big subject of Indian real estate. How are we different? Why should you watch us? Because we don't tell you what the internet tells you. We will tell you what we feel is right. These are all subjects which could sound cliched to most of us. But the way we will address these subjects on my panel will be path setting. We've been doing Realty Plus talk shows across the nation and this is the first time that we ever come and take this to the national platform on Republic Television. Real estate, what a subject this has been. In the last couple of decades, this has seen uh, graphs of ups and downs and uh, realtors and builders and investors and you know people from all, all walks of life have been contributing to call this uh, as one of the pillars of the Indian economy. We will try and give you something what the internet does not tell you. We will try and give you real feedback, real views, what the consumer thinks, what the developer thinks, what are the pain areas. Allow me to introduce my esteemed panel today. I have the Editor-in-Chief Chief of Business World, Mr. Anurag Batra. Thank you, Amit. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the Reality Plus show on Republic TV. and. Uh, I hope uh, and I know that the show will make a difference to the lives of real estate buyers. Sitting next to Anurag is Vinod Rohira, Managing Director and CEO of K. Raheja Group. They have been in business for more than six decades. And uh, we also have the pleasure and honour of having Shweta Ji, who is a very, very versatile personality. Such an honour to have you, ma'am, with us. Thank you. And uh, on my right is Arnab, who is uh, who's you. been more than kind to uh, give his seat to me for this <laughs> show. And uh, I'm told that that is being done for the first time. Uh, and how do you feel like speaking I on such a good list? First of all, congratulations. Really happy at this initiative that you're doing and very, very proud to partner with all of you. Uh, you know, from our perspective, one of the reasons we are looking forward to, to this show is so that we can give, as you said, not technical information. Let's give some real information to people. Homes are a part of people's lives and uh, how can they do it while keeping their safety nets in? I, like all homeowners, want to know whether I did the right thing, uh, how we should stay invested in the market, whether we should, uh, when we should look at selling a house or buying a house. So, Let's give some really practical solutions right. to people in right. the show and no, again, thank you, thank you, I'm very thank happy you. to part. Right, and uh, we have Bharat who's been a stalwart as far as real estate marketing is concerned and uh, I must tell you Bharat has been, uh, uh, you know, an ace marketeer for three consecutive years. He's been awarded as the best marketeer as far as real estate is concerned. When I started my career, I used to look up to his campaigns and look up to what he is doing in terms of ATL, BTL. So, Bharat. What would you like, how do you feel to be at the Realty Plus uh, television edition? Like you rightly said, it's not uh, only just about the product, we need to communicate it and we need to communicate it right. My first question here to AB on my left is, do you think being in the industry as far as advertisements and marketing concerned, developers and the real estate industry is now more recipient to the idea of spending money as far as real estate sales and marketing is concerned? Today, the, the number of buyers has shrunk. So hence, for that oversupply of residential property, there are limited buyers. And hence, doing the right kind of sales, doing the right kind of messaging and marketing to it, the right kind of TG is very, very important. So I think in the last three years, uh, real estate developers have started to narrowly focus on go-to market and uh, marketing and sales in a much better way. Because if they don't, uh, you know, really, they won't be able to sell their project because there's more oversupply and the buyers have shrunk. So in yes. that sense, uh, developers would spend 8% of their right. cost, you know, of, of their revenue on marketing. Right. Uh, I don't think it has gone up substantially, but what has happened is that there is a more laser sharp focus on sales than it was ever there. Earlier right. the focus was on land assembly, was in banking loans. Right. Today the focus is more to understand what the buyer wants and narrowly go to that buyer. I know a known developer out of MMR who's done a product line which has a 180 square feet carpet one bit, still advertises it as a 1 BHK and still sells it at a 1 BHK. The consumer could be, you know, very ignorant about the fact that and get confused Absolutely. between what is a MOFA carpet, Absolutely. what's a Rega carpet, yeah. what is built up, a super built up. Do you really feel prices have come down? Especially if you look at Western region, which is uh, MMR. You don't have speculative investments and Bombay has never been a speculative market. You have always had 70, 80, 90% end users buying even in the peak of markets. 
what RERA has done and what GST has done is further diminish the ambiguity, increase the confusion in the short term, but it's going to clarify the markets in the long term for sure. And you will have a far more defined product offering, far lesser clutter in the market. Prices will actually firm up in the next two to three years because you will see very limited quality supply hitting the market base. You'll have to be financially prudent, clear about all your approvals, list them at the right time, bring the product out. So your costs are going to go up. Right now, you're seeing a, a mix of products that need to complete their timelines and there's inventory. They will, for the short term, you will see a price blip if you don't find consumers for that volume. And there will be assets where the developer will say, let me complete it, let me get the occupation certificate, no GST burden of 12% on the consumer. Let me market when I'm sure of my product. If you have holding costs or you're capable of your finances, you'll do well, your prices will go up. So a mix of both these things will continue to happen in the marketplace. A 300 square feet carpet uh, uh, apartment, Mumbai is flooded. If you look at Gurgaon, if you look at NCR, today is flooded with such apartments. Liberable. We have not really seen how does a 300 square feet carpet apartment really look like? I'm not sure whether this is no, habitable. What happens when it. this inventory gets delivered in 2020 yeah. and gets outrightly rejected and all that inventory then comes back in the secondary market, yes. which builds further pressure of absorption as far as Indian markets are concerned? See, two, three things. One is the word affordable is abused, right? In a developing economy like ours, infrastructure is going to drive real estate sales. It's not going to be real estate driving and being called affordable. So if you have rail networks, road networks, utilities, social infrastructure, all of those building up in micro markets which you had unheard of, those areas you will find consumers running for buying homes because they're all, these affordable homes are all first homes. So predominantly, yes, there is a challenge of 300 and 400 square feet. You can still make a nice 300, 300 square foot one bedroom, but provided you've designed it right and the inventory will you will have a lot of cancellations if you don't build the product based on what you promised to the consumer. Fortunately, because of RERA, you can take compensation and walk out of the asset if it's not exactly what you promised to deliver. Yes. So in that sense, at least that investor is protected. But having said that, there will be a small percentage of bad product in the marketplace. Predominantly, 70-80% you will see quality products hitting the market because nobody wants to take a risk. Once you've announced, you have to deliver, you have to make sure you perform. So, Shweta ji, let me ask a question that uh, probably you're not prepared to answer. If you were to buy an apartment, would you buy or would you rent? Uh, for Indians, buying a house is more emotional in nature. I don't think the time has gone that we should be considering our house as an investment because our first house is always a purchase. And it is a purchase considering the fact that uh, we are going to live there. It is going to be the value that will be attached to our, to our emotions, to, to who we are, to our identities. Also, buying or renting is a question that every house has debated at least once in their lifetime. I think the decision is very individualistic in nature. Every family should decide at their circumstance, in their time of their lives, whether it is better to buy or to rent. Because for me, affordable housing is all about the outlay versus the inlay. Yeah, how much right. am I earning and how much am I uh, actually spending? Right. So I think buying or renting is a very individualistic a decision to be taken at that point of time. So again, whether I want to get into a 1BHK, how long am I going to stay in that house? Uh, uh, am, I, uh, am I doing a job which involves transferring? Am I going to live in this space? Am I going to give over my uh, right. uh, child this same house? And so right. on and so forth. You know, just to add to what Shalini ji said, you know, you know, there is a rental economy. There is an excess economy. So I meet 28 years old who bought houses so that they can put it on Airbnb. So, you know, yeah, and it's their exactly. first house, it's not even their second house. Affordable housing is the parleji. I call it the parleji of housing that everyone can afford. And that is the 6 lakhs to 10 lakhs. And the default on those loans is zero, almost zero. In Bombay, it'll be 25, 30 lakhs. As Shaliji rightly said, you know, the first house, there is not an investment because it's for self-use. So if it's self-use and the long-term view, then really the ROI is not an issue. Right. Second is the market will go down further. Mm. So maybe in three, six months, maybe a better time to buy. Uh, serviceability of the loan is very important. Today, when you buy real estate, uh, 
You also look at the real estate financing, whether you have a fixed tenure or you have a variable tenure, right? Can you foreclose the loan or not? You have to look at foreclosure clauses. Okay. What is one reason for which Indians buy apartment? Do you feel the Goti Kapda Makan still yeah. works in terms yeah, yeah, of yeah. Uh, I mean, owning your... It's, I mean, do owning you think your buying own. decisions are influenced by such... Uh, no, it is not. You can't, you know... More, uh, th more than the stats and more than the economic... We yeah. are an economy, we are a culture that likes to save. And real estate, you know, is a hard asset that is actually a saving that can be utilized, that is there for to... So, you know, it's a culture of saving. You know, Amit makes a very valid point, and I would politely disagree with you on this, because I think it's wrong to say that Indians are just emotional. Indians are not just emotional when they are buying gold. They are also price sensitive. Right. They are price aware. In fact, I would argue that Indians are more price sensitive and more price aware. And for the current millennial, who is very, very attuned to information coming in from multiple right. sources, the Amit, age yeah, yeah. Amit, in this digital age, they would want to know, is it the right time? So they would say, oh, have prices fallen 3% in the last six months now? Is it prudent to buy a house now? Or should I do it when prices are relatively lower than abstaining to buy at home now to navigate higher prices later? So I think, uh, I think there needs to be a certain honesty to the process. And those people who are in the business of real estate, and I'm just picking up from the point made earlier about small houses. Right. What happens when the person gets the key? Do they believe they got the house they wanted? Do they believe yeah. they got the house that was shown to them in brochures, right. in prospectuses, or is it going to be a crash landing of their dreams? True. Similarly, Amit, people would want to know that is it the right price? And I think it is the responsibility of builders and developers to take people into confidence and say, here are the pros and cons of buying a house, right. say in July, as opposed to December or opposed to next January. And the more honesty in the process, the more self-aware the customer is. So Bharat will answer that question. Are we actually doing only storytelling as far as real estate sales is Perfect. concerned? Absolutely. Or the is there any meat at, uh, you know, in, in the entire subject? I think you're doing more sales than any sales guys of any developer. Yeah, and <laughs> I often say that I'm a ridiculous sales guy because I've been using uh, the Indian media to say that if you're not consuming an apartment that you're purchasing today, please don't buy because I personally do not believe with the kind of entry load which is 5 to 6 percent of stamp duty. I think it's them honest of you to say. Yes, 12 percent of GST. Yep. I would want my apartment to appreciate at least 17 percent before I break even and See, even I'll think of any further gains. Uh, somewhere down the line, the equity market people when they come and try and sell the bank guys to you, these are the investments etc. Nobody tries to tell you that real estate is also a good investment. Rather they land up telling you how it is a bad investment. And somewhere we have started believing that also. So except for buying for yourself, otherwise there's a 3% return or 4% return. I don't think so that's the true picture because your asset is also appreciating. If nothing else, it is appreciating by the uh, way your inflation is going up. So you are counting 5% or 6% of inflation plus 3-4% rent coming up. So it's a 9-10% increase. I see a lot of youngsters availing of home loans to purchase apartments and calling it as an investment. If you look at the step up, step down plan of any home loan in the country, you end up paying three times the interest in the first eight to 10 years, okay, which, which eats into your so-called returns or appreciation. So I'm not really anti-real estate, I'm a real estate no, no, fair enough, fair but enough. for consumers, do you sorry. feel that this is the yeah. right time to put in money if they're not going to consume and not going to stay in that apartment? If I can budge in here, I think you've just hit the nail on the head. Understand this. The, the context in which now everyone is holding towards affordable housing is exactly this. Because all this while, we have only been talking to the urban audiences. We have not been talking to the slum developers. We have not been talking to the audience that we actually, that actually need that affordable housing. Anybody who wants to make a building uses the word affordable housing and then ends up having a super hit building. Like we'll come back, we, 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 we will come back to that <laughs> in a moment and discuss more on the first edition of Reality Plus on the public television. Welcome back to the Realty Plus uh, first edition on Republic Television. 
and this has been a very interesting uh, i thought that this could be a discussion but this is this is also turning out to be a debate uh, as far as opinion uh, uh, concerned about indian real estate and patents so uh, maybe if uh, a very straightforward question about Indian real estate. You've been staying in different parts of the country, in Delhi, in Mumbai. Do you really feel the necessity to buy an apartment? I know we've discussed that, but you have comments on whether you want to buy a 10, 15 crore apartment or would you want to rent the apartment I'll tell out? you, as Arnab said, do you want to block a certain sum of money in an apartment or rather stay in a hotel, which is possibly more cost effective because you look at the interest on a 10 crore you know investment or a 15 crore investment so i i don't feel the need for buying an apartment in bombay uh, i think uh, mm. you should buy an apartment in the city that you live uh, mumbai is city of aspiration yes. so aspirationally one may want to buy mm. but you have to be prudent about it and i think renting or using right. a hotel is much better than putting 10 15 crores on because you know, I'm not going to shift to Bombay, so it doesn't really make right. sense. Sir, you've been a public figure. People watch you on television every day. They would want to know, are you thinking of buying or upgrading your current apartment, looking at buying a new one? Do you, do you really think, do you, do you think about buying real estate? Well, I don't think, uh, I mean, see, uh, I, I am I'm one of those people who look at buying a home or have bought a home uh, because I want to live there. So when you shift a city and you say you want to live for a reasonable period of time in Mumbai, so when I was living for a reasonable time, time in Mumbai, after having spent some years in Mumbai and after having stretched my budgets <laughs> <laughs> to the maximum you can think of buying a house in Mumbai, yeah. like people told me buying a house in Mumbai is more difficult than launching a channel in Mumbai, to be very honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, it's, so the fact is, see, let's look at it from the other side. I'm not the typical home, home buyer today. The home buyer is much younger than me. We live in Mumbai. Let me tell you about my newsroom. Our newsroom would be filled with bright young professionals right in their early to mid 20s. We've all been there in coming to the most expensive city to start your career, to build your right. career right now. You know, Amit, when I look at the options out there, renting seems like a convenient option. Vis-a-vis -vis half the Indian population, which is under the age of 25, Two-thirds of the Indian population is under the age of 35, 25 and 35 right. being the benchmarks. So gone are the days when, when renting a house was a slummy, cumbersome option. Right. Today, you have apps for everything, right? You have apps for luggage, right. you have apps for uh, household items. Right. Renting becomes a convenient and efficient option right. for Even individuals. Even the Bollywood who are, and the cricketers are taking yeah, that both options are, nowadays. People yeah. who are on the move, yeah. people who are on tight budgets, and also keep in mind that, that that people between the ages of 20 and 35 wanting to buy a house might also be in the most mobile phase of their lives. You need to look at it in perspective. I read a recent trend which said rent amount is 2.5% of the property value, which is a staggering amount given the fact that the rent you will earn will be far less than the EMIs which you will pay. Right. Right. So what does the young Indian do? Does he put the money into a fixed deposit, an SIP? a mutual fund or do you burn the money to buy a house? Yeah. Therefore, having looked at all this, I would tend to agree with what Shweta Shalini said there, that it has got to be a mix of a good economic decision, but a lot of emotional right, right. emotional and place also has to be there. Right. And, and eventually Indians buy a house for their families to grow there. Yeah. How would you like to respond to that where everybody on the panel or the majority feels we should rent an apartment and enjoy the, the luxuries of, of, yeah, so of such a... So you have to remember that in India, you don't have developers who lose, lease apartments. So you always need an investor to buy for someone to rent. <laughs> right? That's a valid so at point. the end of the day, if a Good consumer point. wants yeah. to rent, yeah. somebody has to buy it. Developers right. are not renting out at 2%. Right. Uh, having said that, also what you must remember now, there are a lot of, lot of tax changes that have taken place. After one year of occupation certificate, you have inventory left. You are, there's a notional tax on income yes. and you start paying tax on your property. So that is discouraging developers to even hold stock, which means that they have to sell out. Mm. And which is a good thing because then it rationalizes prices. Mm. Having said that, taking on Arnab's point, which he made earlier, what's happening is the average age 15, 20 years ago for marriage was 22. Now it's moved to 28. The average age for getting the first child was 25. Now it's moved to 32 to 35. 
So what that does is you're far more flexible in your work environment and your life environment because you don't necessarily need to stick around to get married, think of buying a home, creating an asset. So that's pushed out. So very, very quickly, both. final words, just about 20 seconds, buy or rent and why? I think both, uh, both are growing because if somebody has to rent, somebody has to buy first, like developers don't keep. Straight answer, would you buy or rent or what do you suggest? I have bought and I am on rent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, would, I would say that rent when you can, you know, buy when you're really ready. Yeah. Super, yeah. super, super. How about you? I would say buy for self-use in the city that you live in, otherwise rent and uh, the real estate is going to go down further. So wait three to six months. I'll have the final word from Shwetajit before that. Vinod, uh, what do you think? Buy or rent? So if you're looking at a short term stay and you're not clear where you want to be and your career is not decided, rent. Once you've decided pretty much this is what you right. want to do and that's your workspace, then look for the long term asset. Uh, so the final word would be certainly buy but don't shy away from renting as well. Okay, my final word on the subject is, if you're going to consume and if you're going to go long term as far as, and you have a valid reason to buy an apartment, which could be uh, a capital gain, could be uh, uh, you know, a family arrangement, could be a nuclear family, please go ahead and buy your dream home. And uh, wrapping up the first session of Realty Plus, I think this has been insightful and we will open up the discussion in the next edition. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, 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 oh,